Two recommendations for facility hazardous waste procedures. I wonder what those are. We're on live I early. Know. I noted 900 We're on grams. Early. Uh, we're doing it off Britain. I'm going to come over to Britain in a moment. Hi, folks. Energy I'll be right with you. Decrease in the use, uh, uh, undoubtedly a decrease in the use of energy. It's not a permanent solution. It can't last 200 years. But the uranium that uh, that we produce, the waste, it's got a billion it's years. last a long time. How do you get plutonium, the strontium, cesium, the uranium in? families, the 232, 233s, 234s. Uh, the byproduct of the Here's weapons industry. Here's another example of how biased, uh, how neutral they are. They say fact. Nuclear energy produces no greenhouse gases. Really? The trucks bringing it in, no greenhouse gases. The mining, no greenhouse gases. There's no radon release of all the mining and all these things that are that are happening. The regulatory committee is here. That that is propaganda. That's an opinion. And they're equating bananas, water, and airplanes as these isotopes that will kill you. Self-serving propaganda. They're not clear. Clean source of energy that can be relied. Not recorded at all. That's not a scientific statement. Not all of it, but. I believe that people measure what, measure what matters to them. The proof is in the pudding. The GE employees of the last 50 years General have like an epidemiological study that looks at what their rates of kidney disease and other cancers Canada. that can be related to the work that they've done and see if there's an increase or not. Proceedings. That would be proof. Not saying, oh, it was within regulatory limits. Bare minimum. He's live. Can you please lie? Uh, wind it up, please. Can you, can can you, can you give it up, man? Come on, man. Come on, man. Stop Other turning me into a arsehole, man. I think Come that on, we man. We're talking about bananas. Ongoing health studies. I also think you need to respect the people who don't want it there, the people who are living around it, and and they were not consulted and not given consent. If you think we're too stupid to give informed consent, hand. respect their democratic rights to say no. People talked about risk assessments and... Uh, you know, credible risk assessments. I think that risks. Credible risks. They keep equating is bananas. And how some radiation um, is actually good for you. And Coulter's uh, risk. evil twin is on this risk show here today, folks. And the radiation that's good for you is actually indigenous to the planet. Assumptions right? It's got nothing to do with nuclear events are infinitely repeatable zero and they're, they're talking about that today it's nuclear regulatory life, commission over and, and over and over individual events and when we're talking about nuclear reactions uh, one of my professors said oh scientists believe they're, they're, that there are unique events they're talking about potato background radiation so you can't predict that this nuclear regulatory it's got nothing to do with isotopes it's not it's not what you believe it's who you believe and I think we could have a beautiful, happy world without nuclear power. I don't think nuclear power and the whole thing that's going along with it has made for more democrac democracy. It's not made for, it hasn't been with the democratic consent of the First Nations peoples of, of this country. It goes off in one direction. Just Thank a little bit. say one more thing. He's an 11th generation Pakistani. Yes. There are obvious risks associated with this plant being where it is and the one. transportation involved. And there are obvious remedies, even at a minimum. Could be running a game on this, you know? Put it I'll kill somewhere it. else. That's pretty loud. Uh, right? Question. <laughs> Anybody? Michael question. Boinder, M. Boinder is uh, the commissioner. So, could I just ask, uh, have Sandy McEvans. Edwins. In, in power workers, in nuclear energy workers? That's Thompson for the record. Um, the answer is yes. There were uh, studies done of. Uh, Okay. Nuclear energy workers, uh, Canadian nuclear energy workers, um, and I, I'm failing to recall the, the period of uh, of the We're study. Early but, folks uh, just joined. It will be easier. It was just posted on the CNSC on the website. Next. We've just had uh, uh, the the study yeah. of nuclear energy workers was accepted in the uh, British Journal of Cancer. It was just posted on our website. Uh, there's also studies that have been done that are oh, probably more up. relevant to. Uh, the GE Thatcher no workers, uh, Patsy workers Thompson. of the uh, El Dorado uh, cohort, which included uh, processing Patsy Thompson. from Portland. Bananas. And, and those studies hey, bananas, Dana. And we it's all like have, bananas, uh, Dana. no indication of increased uh, rates of uh, disease, uh, kidney disease. So, Mr. Kalso, would it help to send you the references to those? 
Yeah, I'd be interested to read those. I thought I sent you some of the references I got. Workers themselves haven't been studied. Then we were told at community meeting that no health effects were Mick were there was Ewan? no attempt to measure the health of the stuff I got. Because it was already presumed to be safe. You're lucky you don't got meter in the audience today. Get my phone in this year. Uranium is dangerous. Not that it's safe. Well, give it somebody else. I'm just a dumb guy. Somehow it's all safe. Yeah. That just doesn't fly with me. I don't understand that. How it's perfectly safe. Taking up all the time too. Bring somebody else in. Surely he can't be the only person there. Right? Um, I it wasn't. Uh, often the 911. Uh, often it is. Often Israel. Uh, often it is. Uh, clearly said that uh, contrary to uh, what uh, MP Cash and others had said, uh, the statements I'll were being made so that asleep. the CNC had never been conducted health studies. And I specifically pointed to the health. Hello, UK, USA. Studies to, uh, we're a little early. I'll, I'll kick it in in a moment. The work that had been done. Triple speak, so yeah. All of that work Just passing through. Can you hear that okay, folks? I big no TV. Intervener. Sorry. Thank you. Anything Hang on a second. I want to. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to move on to. It's Michael A. Boinder. I'd like to move on to, uh, to the next uh, mission president. presentation by the Canadian Nuclear Workers Council and, uh, and Mr. Dave Swan is outlined. It's like bananas. Oh, it's a joint presentation. Don't worry, folks. Uh, it's from, uh, like bananas. I have to eat a thousand bananas to get that radiation and, that escapes uh, from the right? That's what they're saying. Well, you tell me, both of you Can't guys. Know. Yeah, it was a thousand. <laughs> Good evening, members of the commission and uh, interveners. Uh, my name is David Shire. I'm the president of the Canadian Nuclear Worker Council, and with me is Mr. Great. David Swan, which is a These worker are all at making the money. Hitachi plant, and he's a union He's a union boy, and he's also Come on, a David. safety They want more money. Uh, Give us some more uh, money. Fleece the taxpayer. Worker Council, You'll so get to it. Hang on. I'm sure you will. This is live, so. Uh, do a joint, uh, what time is it? Well, I still got three minutes to go for uh, a show so, start. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, from the Nuclear Workers <laughs> Council, for, I guess for the benefit of the interveners, uh, what we are, we're a council of unions that are involved in the nuclear industry across Canada, everywhere from the uranium Mommy, that man to scares the processing me. to the nuclear plants mm. to the research and uh, so on and so forth. Come on, David. Our main uh, Say goal so. is to ensure that Hurry the up. voice of unionized workers yeah, in the industry not are heard in, in the wow. debate. Uh, our uh, like a fucking comments crow. today are <laughs> specifically to the GE uh, Tachi plant. Uh, which the uh, uniform local is a uh, member. Give us another 600 jobs. Uh, Union all, wages, I tell you. They all get pensions. Is, probably never heard that. That's a new we get a big slice of the pie every month. That's what we do. That's our job. Union. It's a Come on, David. Of an amalgamation of the, uh, uh, bring them all together in one union. Paper workers union and the Jesus auto Christ. Workers union. Uh, now and the auto workers union. <laughs> fucking from dirt that bag, right? the Unifor uh, and their predecessor, Union was uh, uh, take, take health and safety and environment as a very high high priority. Yes, I'm sorry, no, David. Workers at this plant. Uh, you year. ever seen the sea, and Billy? Uh, getting around the idea, nobody, you know, that lack of communication, nobody knowing that. Well, I would question that in some ways. Uh, for example, it's well known in the labor movement. Uh, the new <laughs> president of the Unifor Union, uh, Jerry Diaz, actually was for several years a service rep uh, at this plant and at the Peterborough plant. This is live, folks. Uh, they are well aware of it in, in that uh, region. The Canadian Nuclear Safety uh, Commission. In Ontario, the Ontario Federation Labor, me. which is the uh, uh, labor body all. of unions in Still Ontario, right. Been They're screaming for an hour. I figured, hey, I was doing the exact same thing as I did this the last hour. For many years, still appears on on their employees. And paid as good with a big billies so now. <laughs> Hookers and cocaine, I tell you. Hookers and cocaine on the weekends. It's wicked. It's wicked. I can hear him now. I gotta go. He looks like he. I gotta go pee. I gotta go pee. That's what he looks like. I gotta. I gotta. Um, the other issue I would comment that the well, fucking uh, pesky Canadians are bitching about nuclear shit again. Got to bring in black water, and mark them out. Found that, uh, it's an old get me hookers and cocaine. But in very good uh, shape, and from uh, our observations, a very good safety culture and a very good uh, fuck you, uh, you do program for workers. Everybody uh, seem to be very happy and uh, productive. 
and, and productive. <laughs> get your reds. Get your reds. Eight hour shift. Come on, get your fucking reds. I said I didn't know if a nuclear worker done any day's work to check his rad meter and see if he got his fucking reds. Yeah, they're used up. And I would say to the interveners that there's a work at that facility who uh, disagree with them 100% about wanting it, uh, wanting it shut down. Starting to rock in these chairs right now. Workers, many of them live in the Something communities as well in the vicinity. So again, uh, I don't see how Almost every chair is empty there, too. It, it, uh, it existed. So with that, I'm going to pass it all got a nice bottle of water, though. Mr. Swan. Tell you what, Thank pretty you. stuffed. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, buddy. Hi, Dave. I'm from you. Unifor Local 252. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, like many of you, I'm just a normal guy works for a living. I just happen to work for GE Attack. He's got a little plaid shirt on. I'm a family man. He's a family man. Two young children. Okay, well, I got cowboy My boots on too, I bet you. I've been a worker at GE for eight years. So pretty here, everyone pretty good. proceedings to know that I wouldn't be working at GE. If they were fuckers. He wouldn't. He wouldn't work at GE if they were, they were fuckers. That's what he meant to say. Because he's a family man. That's how a family man talks, eh? same reservations. I'm just reading between the lines for you. You'll get to it. <laughs> Come over to my blog, dear David Swan. Believe me, I wouldn't be working at this job if it would jeopardize. That's twice he said that. The health of my family. That's twice he said his family. He's been elected both as a union rep. He's been elected. And a CAW now uniform. And a He's making the box. Uh, safety rep. He's driving a dually. Tell you what. And then sit down and discuss they them. Feed ten days of the bitch you he drives up on the old construction site, Big Chevy. That's probably what he's doing. On the fuck, front lines, on the fuck, fuck. That's what he said that time, on the Before fucking front lines. Who's going to say that? About or even seen on our website. I will tell you I'll first, be checking that out, David. First and foremost, in everything that we do. <clears throat> yeah? All steps of our procedures are carefully thought. You ain't got no pension if you don't. Have a done one. This ensures that each task being done is safe. Why do you got people here that works for the industry? Right? We the nuclear. Why do you fly Dana on out there? I have some actual competition. You're only good as your competition, you know that, right? That's not competition. And your pension depends on how good you can talk. Because that's your pension. We also are required to provide weekly urine samples. We have quarterly extremity dose monitoring. And as well, we have annual general health checkups. Not only are the nuclear workers closely oh, monitored, but our working environment is as well. He's crazy. Every day within the Toronto plant, okay, I'll give our it. environmental health and safety. Yeah, that was fun. It's better to do that than what I was doing before I come online, where I was screaming. But I'm recording it. I'm recording it. I'm sure everybody's sick of hearing that now. We're doing good. It's just like bananas, I tell you what. It's just like bananas, man. Come on. It's just like fucking bananas. It's the radiation. It's just like background radiation and freaking water. This is water. It's like the stuff that comes out of the sky. It's got nothing to do with this killer radiation. And they're all there saying it. <sighs> Every fucking one of them. For the last hour, we're talking about, now don't get me wrong, there's real radiation on a plane, folks. Because there's, it's just leaking out of the planet. And nobody's trying to fix it. I don't know what to say anymore. It's not like a banana. It's not, it's got nothing to do with a potato. Sorry. It's fucking nothing to do with background radiation and water. Let's talk about the Pacific. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta stop that. It's a recording. They give you a friggin' stroke to sit there for the last hour and listen to all the professionals telling everybody it's just like you know a few millisieverts of a banana. It's you know. It, it's just like a potato. And then they read on and it's like, like fucking water. Or like their pet rock. The stuff that's in the rock, the stuff that's in the banana, the stuff that's uh, you normally get from an airplane, not, not the new stuff since Fukushima, but the, the, 
right, the normal solar arrays that you would normally get. I'm coming over to the UK right away, don't worry. I'll get back on track. Act like a fucking retard. Because I feel like a retard. But I'm not as retarded as these people are. No matter how foolish I just looked. I do not represent... I'm still smarter than that fucking crew. That's live broadcasting and lying and murdering the Canadian people with each sentence. You can see all of them. They're all in fucking always dirt and all over the place. The body language is unbelievable. I got a fucking headache from watching all that. I don't swear and cursing because that's what I've been doing for an hour. Because people want, or they're telling the public that a banana is the kind of radiation that they're talking about. It's got nothing to do with the radiation. I'm sorry. It's got nothing to do with the radiation that they're talking about. It's got nothing to do with that radiation. The pundits, the medias, and the PR firms are murdering, are murdering people <coughs> every time they open their mouth. And they're getting paid to do that. And they know the difference. They know that that radiation that's in a banana is indigenous. Everybody got radiation. That's the planet is made up of the uranium, right? Uh, that we always equate things with. There's a lot more different types of radiation, but it's got nothing to do with killer radiation. If you had six millisieves of that and six millisieves of plutonium or strontium, the good stuff, the 234 to 235 of uranium, for instance, that fuck you up. You can get your six milligrams or millisieverts or whatever you friggin' want till the end of time with bananas. Not even gonna give you a friggin' hernia, let alone cancer. Well, I might give you a hernia. Depending on what you're doing with the bananas. I know what they're doing with it. It ain't fucking pretty. <laughs> Jesus. That's why they're always using that as the punchline to an insider's joke. Okay, I calm it down. I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. I want to come out and tear these people apart so bad. And I was like, I can't take it anymore. It's like seven, eight minutes before I gotta go online. I'm just, oh, forget. I don't even care. We're up against people. They want to equate. Well, this, you know, that was the Pacific you're looking at. Yeah, you know, that's that's serious. They don't say that. There's a time of normal background radiation that existed on this planet already for four and a half, five billion years. We can any meet a death on that number, but you know what I'm talking about. It's been around for a few billion years, and we'll still be around <laughs> in a few billion years. And everything on this planet is, is acclimated to that, has fulfilled and become, um, in our eyes anyway, we can only see in certain visions. We can't see a lot of things that are going on around us because we only... The human eyes, we can we can make things that can see in different uh, spectrums, but like we don't appreciate a lot of the things that are actually going on, like solar solar power. How you get solar power from from not just the visible light, but from the other spectrums also. See, I tell you, become lucid after a while. But that was very uh, that was very intense to sit there and and expect. Uh, and it's hard to believe it, but that's what they're talking about. They're at the regulatory commission, public hearing, they're broadcasting it live, out to the entire population. All the media is going to run out and say those words. Oh, it's just like a fucking potato. Or it's just like a banana. <laughs> and you want to go up and smack somebody because it's not like water. The normal indigenous, what I call an indigenous, has been around for billions of years, not man-made, not the 1300 weaponized isotopes we talk about. And it's not like the solar array radiation. Why is that? Why are these in a conversation? Why do they keep bringing that up? It's got nothing to do with the isotopes. It's got nothing to do with the betas, the gammas, which is what they're saying it does. I mean, they actually use those words. You know, it's just like the betas, the gammas, the alphas. And there's no such thing as a safe level of radiation. They say it's safe because it's like a banana or a potato or blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go bite somebody's head right off their shoulders. But you do get radiation on, pl on planes now that can kill you. Okay? You do so. Because 
they're flying through these plumes. These planes are contaminated, a lot of them. They've been flying back and forth through these friggin' plumes, folks. Think about that one. Over the top. Think about Sellafield. Sellafield, 8 million liters a day, every day, in the UK, hemorrhaging. Just like Fukushima. So everything that applies to Fukushima applies to, you guessed it, I can't hear you, yeah that's right, Britain, UK, Scotland, Ireland, me, me, me family, uh, obviously I got the Irish tint to me, or British tint to me, that's the rebel in me saying Irish, uh, it's not, it's typical of people on the east coast of Canada, and I came back to the wrong one, gotta come down, Let's go back to that one for a second. Get back on track instead of going down that road. I was just good to go down. I already went down that for 10 minutes when I started. We don't want to go down there no more. But um, but um, Okay, so Sellafield, England, there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging to the ocean. But that's not the stuff that's running over the course like Fukushima. So there's a bit of details. I've got to keep my mind set now for about 35 minutes. But the water... Uh, that's running out of Sellafield is highly toxic. Uh, that, that site can't be decommissioned. They set a goal at like uh, 70 years of 19 lorries a day lugging away uh, the toxic waste that's there, the yellow cake, the 238, right? They use a lot of that. They're getting rid of a lot of that already by turning it into weapons like Fallujah's. Um, right? That's what low-level radiation will do to you. But let's keep going down this road for a little tiny bit. And that's a nasty one. Sellafield, right there, is if something really truly bad goes there, and it might, because there's a lot of it they can't touch. I mean, there's eight million liters a day going into the ocean. That's of contaminated water. See, because there's so much on that site. It's it's a lot like Hanford, just down the road from me, where there's two million gallons dumped into the topsoil and there's 41 miles of open pit down there. But that has to go to the Columbia River first. It's right on the Columbia River. And there's 500 miles, but there's two billion gallons of the most toxic stuff uh, on the planet dumped into the soil in the 50s and the 60s. And they start building tanks, but the tanks were all deteriorating this down there. They try to build a, I'll just give you some context. And they try to build some, um, uh, what I call classification facilities there. And they funneled uh, several billion dollars into this project, but everybody knew originally that the plans couldn't work. And so then they had to funnel many more billions of dollars to try to fix the plant. And then once they start to experiment, they couldn't get in there and replace anything or fix anything because the toxic fumes in these uh, buildings now they're off their toxic wasteland. You can't even get in there. And so that's the problem with these types of facilities is when you have an issue, you can't get into that part no more and that'll eventually spread, right? Now, UK, to get you back on track, UK has been dumping tens of thousands of barrels into the ocean, tens of thousands of 45-gallon drums into the ocean uh, for quite a few decades before they, uh, let, uh, hopefully they gave it up. Uh, so they're surrounded by barrels, I'm getting there, um, and this is important that we do this today, and we got off to a bad start. I apologize for being a dick. What do you expect when the Canadian Nuclear Commission is going to come out and stab everybody in the back? Because what we get over there is going to go over the UK and it's going to go everywhere else. It's going to go into America. And all you need is a major power failure down there. And they're finished. Right in the central Canada. It's coming, right? You know that. They're going to screw up at some point. Snowstorm, something's going to screw up. Um, the one, the plants they're talking about actually... You know, they said they got all these trucks they can bring in. Well, if you got a flood, you can't bring the trucks in, okay? If you got a flood, you can't drive your pretty-looking trucks in there and do something. 
and neither can anybody else. You ever try to run in fast moving water? Go look. I need to be floating down there is the trucks. And bodies most likely if you get that kind of event. And that could happen then you're gonna wash that toxin, that nuclear waste all over Ontario and then it's like whatever. I'll get to that point you know, coming up. Not that it matters, right? It doesn't really matter if you get your nuclear this or nuclear that anymore anyway. Uh, what Fukushima is doing to us. It's going to kill that Pacific Ocean in two years. And Sellafield got its own problem, folks. And it's a bad one. It's really bad. Let me come back. She's pretty in the light, though, you got to admit. Eh? She's a pretty thing. Man can do some amazing things, humans. Women won't do that stuff. But men, men could do some pretty... Women, women would look at it and say, okay, it's going to kill all life on the planet. And no, we can't do that. Men, well, some women, because they're in it. But not many men. Not as a collective. Women won't do stuff like that. But the males? A fucking stupid species, boy. I gotta admit. So, the big A is the shiny apple for Sellafield. Which you were just looking at in the distance. And it's hell on earth. They just don't know what to do with it all. And so that site is, uh, they figure it's going to take 80 years, 70, 80, a couple hundred years. It's hard to say. We'll see when they get around to it. They're not at it. They're just like spending money and gathering up money and burning it up on hookers and cocaine, just like every other. Except for some of the people got to go in there and work in these environments that have been created. And so the most vulnerable in society are tricked and deceived and manipulated to go into these places. So UK has a lot of people there that uh, have vicious cancers and, and nobody will ever uh, help them. And they went in and done things nobody else would do. And some of them knew what they were doing. And that'll go on for a hundred years uh, with no oversight. There's no help for the people. The system just does not here it knows too see it's well aware of what it's doing the whole way through but the solar field is so toxic that the wind blowing over it is radioactive too and so that's very important to what I'm coming up to tell you in a little as we move along here and I should jump over to conversation second see who's laughing at me from the earlier rant live it's so toxic it's so toxic at solar field you got to shoot the seagulls and the birds, when they land, yeah, I suppose they have a bunch of snipers there. Where'd that picture go? And you can see some of the impressions of how the toxins run out of Sellafield, 8 million liters a day. And so that also spreads uh, quite far, right? Because it's not like it's just one day. And then it's all over with. No, no. This has been going on for many, many years. I'm, that's gallows laugh again. Because when I was putting this video together, I was like, oh my goodness, you know. This, I hate, I hate telling these stories and showing this stuff. I've done this before times about Sellafield in the UK, the Atlantic Ocean. You know, Ireland, uh, Portugal, we got all the coastline deer on both sides getting squat. It's a different radiation than Fukushima at all. And we know, like the ones that have seen my videos before and are regular, and I'll come over to the comment section and say hi. I understand that, but the people that are we're, we're directing this video at is the UK. And so first off, the only thing I could say to you was I had to get you acclimated to your own demons that you've got to deal with immediately that are just as vital you deal with that as it is that we deal with Fukushima as we deal with Hanford and that's why we have to get the 4200 peer review academic studies every day to work not only on the Fukushima it'll help in everywhere else but Fukushima is the pressing one because in two years the Pacific Ocean is going to be dead it's not going to leave any oxygen behind you know they can say the fables like they've done today Right, that broadcast is probably still going on with the live stream right now of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission here in Canada. They can lie all they want, but uh, science clearly states 
Uh, there's so many examples of it. And they just model the water by using bananas and water background radiation and airplane background radiation. But there's real radiation from Fukushima now. That's really bad stuff to fly back and forth through the Pacific with planes. And these planes are uh, radioactive if they're spending, and they were. You know, uh, all the planes in the last three years are flying that route every day. They're, they were like exposed to high numbers. Snowstorms, long, huge, massive snowstorms because of the way when you put salt water on these melted cores, these three melted cores that are, each one of these cores are bigger than Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. They got the rods out. Yeah, we, they still got the meltdown there, but they got the rods out and stopped that catastrophe and were able to get on the site. They sacrificed lives like you can't imagine. And so this is a recap of everything that I've been going over for the last 45 days in order to kind of bring it all together. And also, it's so important that I've done that part about, and I'm going to continue to do in a moment here, about Sellafield, England, uh, 8 million liters a day. Like you say, it's so toxic they got to shoot the seagulls. It's so toxic the wind blows over it on top of that. And so all of these radioactive elements that are going into the environment, and a lot of that down there, it, there was enrichment going on in that site, and who knows what there's actually going out there, because that's the UK, right? And what you got to remember is that, um, I should, hang on, i got to come down to the page, which I'm lost, is that in the UK, this has been going on for a long time, much longer than uh, Fukushima, but Fukushima has the three melted cores, and like I was back, that's what I wanted to get back to. Chernobyl was one third the size of the small reactors at Fukushima. The big reactor was the MOX fuel, the number three reactor. And those clouds and those weather patterns are coming your way too. No one's escaping this. But you're getting the extra hammering because just down the coast from the big population, but there's still a huge populations all over that area in particular, really is what I'm focusing on. Uh, because it's quite a distance away, but this has been going on for so long, so that's why you see the prison population going on in Britain, because if that story breaks there, that they're all being slowly uh, poisoned with carcinogens, and a lot of people have realized that and left, of course. You know, this is not like we just discovered it today. I mean, there's so much activism has went on about Sellafield, but people just don't get it. So that's why I use the examples I use. Sellafield, there have been many, many people that are pushing beyond imagination, continue to do it every day, and I've went to jail, and then so many people have lost their lives, and I've seen a lot of documentaries on it too, uh, but the point is, you've got to think about Fukushima, this is a monster coming our way, it's already uh, infiltrated most of the Pacific Ocean, and the German models have showed just in a two week release, originally, that you would get radiation throughout the entire Pacific. And this this is not like bananas, this is not like potatoes, this is not like background radiation for water or the background typical that came out of the sun, the solar rays, or the rocks you found on the ground that are all indigenous to Earth and that all life on Earth has acclimated to that and that's why they exist. They're the superior gene pool. Not so sure about the human one, but we know that all the plants and animals on the planet are the superior gene pools that have fought for their place. And we have just extinct most of the Pacific in less, a little over a thousand days from Fukushima. And the result of that was we seen Superstorm F4 tornado take out the Philippines, 7,000 islands in the archipelago. And there was nothing left standing, no trees. And you watch that documentary up on Journeyman last week, and the people that the interview were saying, if this is global warming, because they think it's global warming, and I'll get into that part for you. And this is what's going to happen to Britain, because that's what you're seeing right now with these heavy cold fronts and these massive winds that just come down there and pounded it. That's a direct result of having both sides and the wind from this monster that you won't deal with. It's you refuse to deal with. Chernobyl is sent in a million people. There's people around out on the roof of Masha, the, the eight to 12,000 Rankins, and they're only allowed out there for 15 to 20 seconds. The soldiers, Gorbachev, mobilized the military. 
And these people had 15 to 20 seconds to get the job done with a little tiny shovel because if you pick up two or big, it might kill them. Eight to 12,000 Rankins. And their job was to move a little tiny piece out of the way, and that way, eventually, people would be able to get out on the roof. And they burned up soldiers day in, day out. And there was one example there where the guy had instructed 10 people 100 times, different times, 100 different groups of 10 and 12 people each day. And they would run out the roof for 10 to 15 seconds, get their rankings and run away, and go home and never go back on that site again. And unfortunately, that's what you're going to have to do with places like Fukushima. It should have been done, but how are you going to do that? 200 million people. And that's what Gorbachev done. He used the military. Uh, and it's still hell on earth, but at least they got it reasonable. That is not totally destroying their country 100%. And so a lot of this radiation, people says you don't have to worry about radiation. Uh, it takes 20, 30, 40 years. This stuff doesn't, okay? This stuff could drop you especially the plutonium and the strontiums. And not to mention the massive amounts of uranium. You change the property of the alphas, of the betas, of the gammas, of the isotopes itself, and then it's used in a military weapon, like I've covered extensively. And that stuff, has you had changed the, uh, the, the neutrons and, um, and the x-rays and the gammas and the betas and the alphas, when you fire those bullets, because they're all dirty bombs anyway, but that's a whole different type of dirty bomb than the enriched ura than the uranium that they were using, because they changed the properties of those uh, by extracting the 0.02% of the uranium to get that weaponized infrastructure that they use for the MOX fuel. And the MOX fuel, the number three reactor, now I'm not sure if they might have had MOX fuel on, and most likely did in Sellafield, England. That's hemorrhaging out 8 million liters a day. Let me come back down. I come over and say hi to a couple of people because it was a hard rant on the, that it's probably never going to stop. I just open up that window before I come back here. Let me get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Let's have a look at Bring up that window. I'll come back right over here. And so everybody's got a serious problem. We've got to come together as a population, as a civilization, as an entity, and deal. And we might have to use nuclear power plants. We might need nuclear power plants at this stage. It doesn't really matter that much. What matters is we don't have the technology. So if we put 4,200 peer review academic studies every day, to work on this technology, it might be okay to get a nuclear plants all over the place that can deal with the technology, but we cannot, we should never have this, tech, this technology on our planet because we don't know how to deal with it. It's a crisis that is utterly out of control. That's going to move everybody off the entire coastline of the Pacific Rim, and it's no good going to Britain. It's no good going over to Greece. It's no good going over to Portugal. It's no good going anywhere on that continental edge there because these superstorms are here, they're going to be over there and in between because of the hell that's coming out of that ocean. Non-stop. And they're not planning on stopping it. They're not even trying to stop it. They're saying they might be able to decommission the plant in 80 years, but that's going to destroy both oceans down there and every other ocean in between. And so if we don't, if we don't stop, start calling these people out immediately, Say, you know, every go look at every one of their interviews, every one of their interviews, and they're saying bananas and rocks background radiation and water background radiation and chicken eggs background radiation and you're surrounded in radiation. That's indigenous to this planet, has nothing to do with the weaponized monsters that they know better. They know better. They know better. They have the education. They've been at it for decades. They just get there and they yonder way through it. They don't have no backbone. And so they're the perfect person to get there in front of a mic. They have no... They're psychopathic. They'll just sit there and lie. That a weaponized isotope has something to do with a banana. That a weaponized isotope... You need 1,300 Geiger counters. Not only for UK to find out what the hell is on their coastline, but for Fukushima and every community on its coastline of the Pacific Rim. 
and we know the rain will pick this stuff up. We know the ocean spray goes in a couple of hundred kilometers. We know the, the big storms that are formed on the oceans all around Sellafield, you know, all these clouds getting picked up and dumped on the people every day, right? And then that stuff gets plugged and thrown up into the stratosphere and the atmosphere and the ionospheres and it gets carried all around this planet. The, the, our, our troposphere is exactly called that because it's a river running up there. And like we, we get thousands of miles on these oceans of clouds every friggin' day picking up all these radionucleoids, these different particulates. And if we want to focus on the 137 and the iodine that got an eight day half life and potatoes and bananas and rocks and background radiation and raw water and background radiation from the sun which got nothing to do with the weaponized military, the weaponized uh, power, the weaponized lasers. The, it's got nothing to do with any of these isotopes, and they're always trying to find ways to use these isotopes to, to bring them into our lives as if they actually have a purpose, because they created them as a byproduct of weaponized and creating and solving equations. A lot of these isotopes are only created so they can validate so they can verify an equation that'll give them a more powerful weapon to the point where they got MOX fuel, which is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet, which means it's 18 million times worse than Chernobyl's accident. 18 million times, and that's missing. It's not to mention all the pools that were above these reactors. And so that's getting carried around the planet on the jet streams. That's getting carried around the planet through convection of the ocean and troposphere and the stratosphere, through contaminated through foods, through, through uh, we got the new Trans-Pacific Partnership. They want to go out and steal all their natural resources before a uh, hundred mile wide F4 and F5 tornado shows up again and destroys all the resources in those areas and they can't get their hands on it. And so much pollution gets tossed every time there's these typhoons are whipping up the ocean. All the way up to Vietnam, all of the Philippines got hammered with radioactive water with those surges that were over 50 feet high. 50 feet high. That's a tsunami. That's, not, that's because the winds were exceeding such a high speed, see? And so on the ocean, they're talking about all the time they're pushing how everybody's losing here and losing there because the sea is rising because the speeds out there are rising, because the radionucleoids that are putting out the, the gammas and the betas uh, all throughout the ocean, the trillions, the trillions of disintegrations, <coughs> is lifting, it lifts the ocean up. This 235 mile an hour, 100 mile wide F4 tornado, when that should only be seen on Mars, and that a normal tornado is only a quarter mile wide. At its biggest, that would be a badass tornado, a quarter mile wide. That would be insane. It would go for like six miles. The Filipino tornado, it came from a thousand miles out where it was traveling at 300 miles an hour. And when it hit the coastline, it was hitting truly at speeds of 235 miles an hour. The air became entire projectiles. If you stuck your hand out anywhere, you would get it torn off by projectiles. No ifs, no buts. There was no dirt in between buildings. You hid away and you prayed you didn't get sucked out of there like the father who had three daughters pulled out of his arm. And they weren't, he said they were pulled away. He pointed up. That's coming because we won't deal with it. Because we, we have the capabilities to try, at least try. And Sellafield has seen the results now because of so much going into that ocean. We're seeing the results all around Britain of superstorms now in the last year and a half and they're blaming it on global warming. Well, all this moisture that is picking up, the storms are picking up, it's energy. Think about water in a pot, the molecules are moving faster. Th these things are truly free radicals. And because of the sulfur and the way it interacts with uh, the melted cores in Fukushima, we have unhinged this planet with uh, with these uh, spherical uh, shapes that are created by the sulfur that can insert 
take in rather as a great receptor for the uranium, for the strontium, for the plutonium, and for the cesium, and it becomes like its own little nuclear engine. And it's so it's so tiny, it doesn't salute with water. It's it just becomes it becomes very robust and it gets carried like the wind itself, it doesn't need to get out into the jet stream because it's such a tiny particle, right? And so when it does get out in the, in the jet stream, it aggregates with snow, it aggregates with water because it's electrically charged. And so that will fall back down on you. And that's known as, I know you'll never hear the media talking about it, but you'll always hear it talk about uh, anything but fallout, right? Which implies it falls out of the sky. That's why the name fallout exists. If you go back and look at the 50s and the 60s indoctrination machine of uh, nuclear fallout, duck and cover, blah, 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 once you come to the conclusion is that they can't say that anymore because that is so true for everybody on this planet, but it's getting worse. Now the storms that are coming are going to make a jump. Like the Philippines, like Britain, is going to make a big jump though, see? Because of all of these nuclides that are coming at them, and I was, I was trying to come up with a buckyball name that time, but because that's what they're shaped like, what they call a buckyball. If you look that up, that's actually a nice shape. They're like a, what was it that they described it as? The Irish uh, soccer ball. And inside of it, uh, the uranium or strontium or cesium or plutonium's uh, daughters, which is a terrible name for this stuff. This stuff has got nothing... It's got to do because it produces these little families, right? The hydrogens, the, the heliums, and everything else as you go down that. And it's, it's a jumble, but it's important if you really truly uh, know your way around that. Uh, but it has no benefit when you're trying to explain it to the average person. You're going to leave them confused till the end of time, so you don't do that. So, but, but what it is is you got so much, it just won't stop because nobody was trying and what we got to do is we got to treat it as a meteorite that's coming at us going to destroy this planet because that's what it's going to do it leaves no oxygen behind that's an issue okay and it radiates everything on the coastline and then the spray is picked up and dragged through your communities and but that's quickly absorbed into your soil into your children's clothing on the way to school when it's raining out into every aspect of your life, in, into your food, of course, into your fields. It's going to be worse and worse and worse and worse. And so, you know, they're hiding away everything that's going on here, but as you go down a little ways into this rabbit hole, you can truly understand that there really truly is three melted cores, that there really truly is a catastrophic event taking place in the Pacific, that there truly is a machine out there that is intent on destroying this planet with uh, with these isotopes. Intent because they won't let anybody change it or try to stop it or try to deal with it. Even Japan will not let anybody in there. Sellafield nobody even tries because everybody misses that for some reason including me a lot of the times even though I've covered it quite a lot of time on this site I've dedicated videos to it but now it brings it home you know when you look at Fukushima so much the parallels is not just there, you know, they're dumping all these drums into the ocean all the way around. That's full of the worst of the worst, the most unimagin unimaginable stuff that has to be recovered at some point in the future. Think about here in British Columbia, how they had to go out there and get the old ammunition dumps from the Vietnam War, and the divers were out there for a couple of years recovering the stuff they dumped off the side of the ships after the Vietnam War because it's such a contaminant, it's so harmful. Well, all those 45-gallon drums they dumped in the ocean, ultimately some civilization in the future will go out and try to get that out of the ocean. Some civilization in the future will try to do that if it's existing, if it shows up here. Uh, the big thing is we can't let them get off the planet because of what they're doing to the planet, because of what they've done to Iraq. 5.5 million bullets a month because of what they dumped off San Francisco. 25,000 that we know about, but we know all the plants are leaking into all the oceans. And so each continent and each country has to come together and put aside of our bigotries and our racism and our prejudices and get our children into colleges and we try to help this planet. We, we stop wasting 
our entire like the Americans are spending uh, 53 cents on every dollar on war that they know about on purpose people says oh you know they're gonna go broke well the Federal Reserve can go broke because it's a private corporation it's in the yellow pages alongside of the Federal Express and so if the Federal Reserve goes broke no they just declare bankruptcy you open up Federal Reserve number two which they probably already done nobody really noticed we got more important problems is that we can't wait for our governments anymore to get their act together we have to force them to get their acts together or they become useless and then society is going to break down as the storm starts devastating what would you do right now if what happened to the philippines happened to you where there wasn't a house standing in britain and don't take it can't happen to you don't take it can't happen to me tomorrow you got so much hemorrhaging into both oceans now. It's like uh, death plumes non-stop on top of that coming out of these uh, death traps. Going across the death streams into our countries. I don't... How long was I talking? I'm screaming at this stage. I'm so upset. I'm devastated with the Nuclear Regulatory Committee today. I can't believe it as much as I want to. I watched that the first 10, 15 minutes. I know I look like an idiot, but I, you should have seen me the hour before that. You think you got no respect? Look at it. That's got nothing to do with, I know that, that one probably does, but <laughs> with poor example. But potato background radiation in real life got nothing to do with it. If you get real real radiation, it'll do that to the potato, what you see in there. Banana radiation got nothing to do with the radiation at Sellafield. It's got nothing to do with the radiation at Fukushima. It's got nothing to do with the radiation from... And the water got nothing to do with that, Fukushima. It's got nothing to do with Sellafield. It's got nothing to do with Hanford. It's got nothing to do with Iraq, the 5.5 million bullets a month that they fired down there. Look it up yourself in Iraq. You'll find the government headlines. They got to increase the production of bullets because they're running out of them. Well, most of that came out of McAllister's. There's four plants in America, and all they do is make depleted uranium munitions. That's it for guns, for tanks. The Abram is 10 pounds of 238, uranium 238. And it's not tipped, it's not coated, it's solid 10 pounds of 238. And that's a big, dirty bomb. If you support your military, you support all those dirty bombs. Americans alone were firing 5.5 million bullets a month. Most of that came out of McAllister. McAllister is bomb manufacturer in McAllister, Oklahoma. And every one of these things are dirty bombs. Every one of those bullets coming out of those four factories. And at any given time, McAllister's bomb manufacturer in particular because it's required by the NRC to have on a site so much, it's the equivalent of um, in order to keep maintain its license, see? It has to produce 20 train car loads a day. But at any given time on a site, there's about four and a half million Nagasaki bombs worth of yellow cake of uranium-232 that's contaminated with plutonium, with uh, uracium, with Amaricium, rather, with, with all the byproducts and the heavy metals. So when you're firing that in other people's countries, that breaks apart and destroys it. And so we got all that radiation from four continents. We got all the radiation from Sellafield. We got all the radiation where we got an entire Pacific Ocean is full of it. The entire Pacific Ocean is full of radiation, folks. And it's got nothing to do with the sunlight. If you drink that stuff out in front of you know, 3,000 miles away from Fukushima will probably kill you right on the spot. If you drink it up close to Fukushima, it will kill you on the spot. You can drink, uh, you know, the normal water. That kind of radiation can't hurt you because it's indigenous to Earth. What we're talking about is man-made, weaponized, military-industrial complex. And that's showing up in your planes. But the radiation that comes through the sky, that's got nothing to do with it. But now when you fly planes, you're flying through the death plumes in the Pacific Ocean. They're all over the place now, all over this planet. Because this stuff is up where the planes are flying, right? At 30,000 feet. 
And like you say, once again, the cellar field, it's nonstop like Fukushima. It's hemorrhaging into the ocean all day, every day. It's a relentless machine. And it's right on the ocean. No one's trying to stop that from going into the ocean. And over the conversation and right below is the NRC or the Japanese FOIA releases and there should be a Sellafield one underneath that too somewhere hi Hawk boy hi Zeke free yeah it's a, but uh, mobile phones are not ionized radiation but yet they do cause the cancers but just because the radiation we're talking about is ionizing radiation. And so bananas and water and the, the stuff that's coming from the sun is not ionizing radiation, see? Hi, Joriel. Well, the whole problem is, yeah, you can drop the H-bomb on, Jap on Japan, but just don't drop it on uh, Fukushima because we've got to get in there for a couple of thousand years and deal with it. But in, I don't care about the rest of them. Go for it. I know Love Angel. I want to be live 24. Sorry to hear that. And it's on every street corner, so don't feel bad. It's on every street. Don't feel, not bad, but don't feel uh, alone. And you say one in, one in every three people are going to die of cancer. So there's links below. DCA cures cancer, reduces all tumors. First off, all tumors. Your brain, lung, liver, pancreas, pituitary gland, uh, all, the, all the normal cancers, imagine saying that, breast cancers are all, by the way, ionized, that was a new study a few weeks back, but uh, DCA, and, oh, Char sent me a message, she said she got, she found it on uh, Amazon, and she ordered it. And so that's pretty cool. I uh, must live in a small place, I guess. But you can get it at your health food stores. And there's a link below about that. And it's an updated one about the DCA. And it shows how many times it's been peer-reviewed, who peer-reviewed that study, who the original author is, blah, blah, blah. You find all your links, all the names. Right? It's really simple to do. It's totally benign. Unlike Sellafield, England. And once again, come up for a second. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, let's put it there. Because these, this low-level radiation that they're seeing originally is growing every day because Sellafield and Fukushima are both hemorrhaging out. But Fukushima is on, on, out of control because it has MOX fuel. i got to come back to the conversation. It has MOX fuel. Uh, and that's two million times worse, the estimates are, than any other reactor on the planet. It's melted 100%. The pulls above it are missing. That's around 360,000 rods. Because each pull had roughly around 122,000 rods in it. There could have been more pulls, I'm not sure, in building three. And she blew her top big time. And uh, they can't get into that building for about a thousand years. They're, so, they're going to try this. And it's melted down onto the bedrock. And so the, there's a bedrock down there with an old, what they call an old river. They built it up with 100 foot of topsoil. And uh, it melts down and lands on the bedrock. And then the river runs around and keeps it cool for a couple of thousand years. But all those isotopes, and all three of those reactors have done that. They're just trying to say, oh, it splashed around inside the container like it's paint or something. Like, tell these people to shut up, okay? Because uh, these temperatures are 9,000 degrees. They don't hang on to anything. Right? They do that to muddle the water. They literally stay together, and they sink down in the compact, and they consume everything. They can't escape each other. They might pop, you know, like you say, you pop, but that's what it's consuming is popping. But then again... At 9,000 degrees, uh, it aerosols everything. And so all the rods that fall down on these bowels of hill that are burning out of control now for a thousand days are sending the plumes up into the environment and filling up the stratosphere. And so the storms we're seeing around the world are a direct result of an increase of energy per cubic meter around this planet. And like the Pacific Ocean is much higher, so we're going to see a lot more F4 and F5 tornadoes 
that are hundreds of miles wide and they're traveling three and four hundred miles an hour when you crash into the land. And that could happen any day. And the examples, of course, are the Philippines. And that's a well-known example now if you think about it. How do we get a F4 tornado in Texas that normally at best would be a quarter mile wide, travel for six miles, show up in the Philippines, that's 100 miles wide and travels for hundreds of miles and annihilates a 7,000 island archipelago in that jump, right? How did it jump from that to something that you should only see on other planets in the solar system, certainly not on Earth? Maybe maybe a few billion years ago, but not. there's no precedence of Earth chewed up in the last couple of a million years on Earth. Right? We, there's no examples of that out there in geology, or geological or whatever. So we'll wind it down. UK has to fix their problem. They got to put all their universities. They're, they got to come up with solutions to live in that country or get out of there. I personally wouldn't stay there. You're seeing so many people abandoning. Uh, these people are educated and they know what's going on. They know they're going to get suffocated by these isotopes from both sides. Because of the way it runs around your coastline, I'll show you. Sorry. So it's important that you make some some serious decisions about dealing with your problem, because it's not going to go away. It's not going to give it up. It's not going to slow down. Okay. It's just going to get much, much worse, much worse. Um, and that's because nobody will address it. Nobody's going to deal with it. The system is going to wait until it takes out, like the Philippines, the entire country with a mega storm. And if anybody thinks that's not true, uh, look at the Philippines and the proximity of what happened was the typhoons went over to Japan, over Tokyo, and whipped up all of these isotopes, right? And then it went straight over and slammed into, and it was picking up speed halfway there over 300 miles an hour, and slammed into the Philippines where it took her to 7,000 islands. And most of these still haven't been visited. Imagine trying to organize for 7,000 islands when your own government doesn't even, and most of them have disappeared. I mean, they looted everything themselves. That's what the government will do. It'll loot everything itself when it happens on top of that. And that's why there's nothing left over for you because the governments in those communities like Katrina and anywhere where there's a big disaster, the government loots everything themselves for their own families. After all, they were hurt too. And they'll wait for the Red Cross to come in and help you six, seven days later after the frenzy when people are desperate beyond imagination. Go look at the videos for five or six hours of what happened to the Philippines. And um, you'll get what I'm talking about. You'll actually truly understand that this is real. That the air was full of projectiles. Something we only seen in horror movies about space is here on Earth. For 100 miles wide, minimum, sustained winds of 195 miles an hour. Hi, uh, sorry folks. I wanted to bring up the pit, another picture before I come back over and say goodnight in the comment section. Once again, I apologize for screaming because I was screaming a lot worse than that before I come online. It's just, it's insane that the nuclear agency having a live stream and talking about bananas. I know, i already done that over and over. That's for anybody who might have joined us. Got to go back and I'll be humiliated till the end of time. But I really don't care because that's the reality of it. Look at it. Right? And it just spreads wider and wider. And so the storms pick that up. That's why you had these freezing temperatures. That's why you had, because you had that cold front. And so that enhances, it gives it more energy to... The higher the winds, the colder the temperature, like the the wind chill effect, right? And that's why you have those temperatures. It's because you're getting a higher winds, and that's the wind chill effect. And that's uh, showed up just, it just broke the world record. There's another indication, see? Because when you think about how much energy it takes, and that's a change of a pattern. Normally the oceans are in a thousand year cycle, which dictates a lot of the jet streams and everything else, of course, and, and the ocean patterns and there's different salinities and different temperatures and the different ways they mix us and we're kind of lucky about that and if we get to work as a civilization right now and turn 4200 peer-reviewed academic studies 
into solving our nuclear waste and our nuclear nightmare. I mean, there's nothing more important than stopping those three reactors from destroying this planet out of Fukushima. And there's nothing more important. We don't even think number four exists. We don't know because the internet shut down in Japan since October 25th, since the 7.3 earthquake, they closed down the internet and implemented martial law down there. And that uh, Sellafield, England, no one even talks about it, including me. Even though I have done it quite a bit in the videos, but still, you know, it's it's like Fukushima where you can't escape it. And yes, the storms are going to get worse. It's got nothing to do with your tin cans or your pop bottles or your little four-cylinder ship boxes driving down the road, okay? Just one of those container ships on the ocean produces more pollution than 50 million cars. That's more than all the cars in Canada, you know, um, New Zealand and Australia combined. 16 of them produce more pollution, more particulates than all the automobiles on the planet. And there's 90,000 of them out there. That's 42 trillion people on this planet every day. Better watch me, I can I start going. Uh, hi, James Wong. We're shutting down, folks. Yes, we have no bananas. Yes, we have no bananas. Hi, Mom and Ox. I'll come in again, folks. Catch your comments after the show. Uh, tonight was about trying to stay focused, but unfortunately I watched that live streaming and look, my brain just lights right up again about the regulatory. I'll get a link and stick it under the video after. And I'll see if I can download it. Because I want to tear out those. I, I, I captured over an hour of it with the old cam, and I'm going to chop out those creatures singing bananas and rocks and stuff like that as background radiation. I'm going to come out with a video probably tonight. And just stomp on them. Hi Sylvia, uh, Starlight. I think 2012 uh, reggae man, Joriel. Hi. Yeah, that's right. Not long ago. That's never going to stop. Hi, old Lima Mitt. Yes, we have no bananas. Let me come down and see why. Hi, Lisa. Braffitt. I don't stop smoking. Hi, Logman77. Braffitt. Ten miles away from a Max Null uh, fuel plant. Holy cow. You can take Lindsey Green for that one. Yeah, I gotta watch that one, Mama Knox, on the beach. Yeah, good, good point. That'll give me something to wind down on because if it goes back to that regulatory commission video in the next 24 hours I'll love a snap uh, Andrew we got just passing through uh, we got I'm just saying goodbye to folks here for about a minute and I'm not very good at it we've done a late uh, early show for the other side of the planet so when that renders back up hopefully uh, people find it unseen recording Um, hi Jester, Char, hi, Moments Nothing More, hi Mickey, hi Nancy, oh, come on down, get another, Nukeborn, uh, Not Love Acqui, hi Robert, Want to be alive 24 high? And I think I got everybody here now, so there we go. Hi, Ray Button Studio. Yeah, we can't solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created the Albert Einstein. That's fitting. We'll end it on that. We'll end it on that. And uh, hour and nine minutes, that's a long stream. That's because I spent 10 minutes early screaming. And uh, I know I apologize several times, so I'm not going to apologize because I really, that's how I felt for the hour before that, that that was horrible, that these people were lying about bananas, equating it to radiation, equating um, potatoes and rocks that are indigenous to the planet, radiation and sunlight radiation that's indigenous to this planet 
with isotopes that will murder you and your loved one, give them leukemias, give them breast cancers, give them prostate cancers, we'll give them every cancer out there, hopefully not at the same time, and that uh, the link below to the DCA if you're suffering from cancer is a peer review study that's been peer reviewed quite a lot of times and that's why I use that particular link so that'll help you understand that. We'll see you tomorrow folks. Thank you and we'll catch you.